The world just keeps getting weirder. I'm Eric Sapanik. This is John Caro. That and much more right here on The Gold Spot. Well, John, here we are. We're a month out from the changing of power, but it has not slowed down to the lunacy that is the geopolitical atmosphere. Could you elaborate on that, please? Well, if I must, I will. I mean, it, just looking around, it, a couple of things strike me right away. The outgoing Biden administration looks like they're really trying to leave a mess for the new administration. Uh, a few days ago, they issued an order banning the export of certain memory chips to China. Mm -hmm. China responded by banning the export of certain critical minerals to our country. Uh, you know, tit for tat, childish behavior. They're just creating more tension and more aggravation around the world. And what that did was it provoked Goldman Sachs to predict that the price of gold is going to hit $3,000 an ounce next year. And once I got through all their technical comments, what they're really worried about is the central banks continue to buy gold in tonnage. And there must be a reason for that. The other thing that we have to keep an eye on is just the general level of tension in the world. Uh, you know, South Korea's president tried to impose martial law because he wasn't happy with his legislature. That didn't work. Uh, the French government looks like it's about to be dissolved and redone more to the right. Countries are not interested in getting along anymore. We hear about tariff wars. We hear about getting around sanctions. Nothing seems to be working in terms of calming things down. And you know, people have to keep an eye on that because it's not going to go away. So the central banks, if we think about what we've seen in the last, say, four years, I mean, we've seen record amounts of purchases. Now, the central banks are continuing to bring gold as a bigger part of their portfolio. They're not unloading it. And that's something that I think that everyone needs to understand. This market is not being driven by us, the little people. It's being driven by the larger entities of the world. That's why the gold price continues to rise. It's not the, it's not the mom and pops deciding to put it into their portfolio. That's something that people need to keep in mind. Now, let me ask you about South Korea. What in the world do you think is going on there? That's a hard one to say, but I mean, you've been around since it was formed as a country, so I figured maybe you could, <laughs> maybe you could go ahead and, and elaborate on what you, what you believe is going on in that region. One of the facets of the democratic system that is part of the price of having the system. The South Korean president is at odds with his legislature because they're from the other party. So it's kind of like, like what we see here a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead of dealing with them, he had a tantrum the other day and at midnight held an, an unscheduled press conference conference and announced he was imposing martial law uh, and that caused a bit of an uproar uh, the members of the legislature and there's pictures of this were forced their way back into the building they were climbing fences they were pushing the police aside and they voted unanimous, unanimously which they're entitled to do to undo the martial law and what i think confuses a lot of these countries around the world is the police and the military who have been stationed there left, which is what you would expect in a democracy. Democracies are messy, they're noisy, they're inefficient, but they're still the best system on the planet. And I think we saw a really good lesson there of how it works. And to me, it's like our system. No matter what the uproar around the changing of the guard at the White House, the outgoing guy always leaves. And that confuses a lot of countries around the world where that doesn't happen. But the tension level, the the uh, lack of trust, the continuing uh, buying of gold in massive quantities by governments, there's something there that people have to keep an eye on because something's going to happen soon. Well, uh, one thing that we can also uh, take a focus on is step away from that disaster. I mean, we still got the Ukrainian conflict, which is becoming even more uh, scary, if you yeah. would. It, I mean, it looks like we're on the forefront. I mean, you, I mean, you were alive during the during the Cold War, I was not. What would you say the tension value is between, say, then and today? The difference back then was nuclear power, nuclear weapons were new. Everyone was frightened of them. Nobody wanted to see them used. Today, nobody seems to worry about that. It's all posturing and threatening. And somebody's going to talk himself into a corner. 
And if he's going to lose power, it's unpredictable because the value of human life is so much lower now than it was then. I think that people tend to not believe that it'll ever happen. I, I think that's really what, uh, the only thing that I can think of is we have no control over what's going on with these regions. Um, we voted obviously against war when we have brought Trump in because we want to see peace resolved um, in that region. But you know, let's talk about the money factor. I mean, every single time a missile goes up, somebody's making money. And every single time we send money somewhere to some hostile region, somebody's making money. Now, we've also seen where a lot of this humanitarian aid is then all of a sudden transferred over to weapons. Now, let's see what Joe Biden did yesterday. He went to a country he didn't know in Africa. He didn't know the name of it. But at the same time, he gave him a billion dollars where he was there for humanitarian aid. We didn't have enough money, apparently, to give to the people um, of North Carolina after the hurricanes because FEMA was broke. How does that work, John? It doesn't work. It's politics. It's business as usual. Uh, you have people in power who are spending other people's money. And, you know, that's the old Margaret Thatcher quote. The weakness of socialism is what, when they run out of other people's money to spend. Yep. Uh, we're in that kind of cycle. And you look at the national debt. You look at the, what the politicians really don't do. Uh, it, it's, it's worrisome. Yeah. And we are at the beginning of World War III. You just look at the history of the other wars. It, it, it is all factors that are not going to be beneficial to the dollar because that means exponential spending. And I, I just, I, I don't see that. It, I'll tell you what, Trump has got one heck of a handful here. I know that people are very um, excited for him to come in as, as, as a lot of us are. Um, but I will say this, I, I'm hoping that we're not rolling in, you know, a, a patient that's flatlining um, into, you know, the best doctor in the world kind of thing. Because even the best doctor can't bring somebody back to life if, if, if the uh, critical level goes too far. So that's, to me, is, is really the main concern is how many things are moving around here and what we're going to have to do with the dollar and how much we're going to have to print to try to get us through not only what's going on here at home, but what's going on all over the world. If they don't get control of the spending, the pain is going to be unimaginable. Let's go ahead and end it right there. We'll see you next week right here on The Gold Spot. If you enjoyed today's Gold Spot, like or subscribe to both our YouTube and Rumble channels. Also comment below if you have any questions or if you'd like to hear us talk about a specific topic in a future video.